Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to be taking a look at a lithium ion battery. This one is by Golden Mate, and it is a 20 amp hour battery. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. Here's what I did with this it came without a charger. So I charged it using the standard lithium ion protocol of applying between 14.4 and 14.6 volts and the battery management system inside takes care of the rest. So that actually made it easy to charge. Now, as it turns out, I have the same brand of battery in a 100 amp hour and it's located underneath here and it powers the entire station. And I've got it here for sort of a, a long term test. But this was sent to me to see what I could do with it. Now you'll note the first thing that I did with it was put a uh, Anderson power pole connector on the thing so that I could use this to connect to any of my equipment. And that's what I did. I've got some pictures to show you. Let's take a look. Here's the picture um, of the battery. It's a model LFP1220, which means 12 volts, 20 amp hours. Now that 12.8 volts is not a nominal voltage for lithium ion battery, more like 13.3 uh, volts. And that 256 watt hours will be a little bit higher if you multiply that by 20. It says uh, a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is the stable chemistry and the battery management systems up here in the top. Uh, it says charging voltage 14.4. Uh, current 4 amps, 10 amps max, actually just apply 14.4 to 14.6 volts. Be careful with that not to go over that or the battery management system will just say no thank you and not charge. Now here's something that's very interesting about it. A 20 amp continuous discharge current. Well shoot, that'll power my ICOM 7300. So this is what it costs to get this battery directly from Golden Mate is seventy dollars, um, and <laughs> you can buy it on here. Uh, the The thing came fairly quickly when it came to me. This was given to me for review. Okay, fair disclosure. Now uh, these are the batteries in their series: seven, ten, twelve, sixteen, twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred, and two hundred amp hour batteries. They also have something that. Uh, you can get Bluetooth on the thing. It will power the device. You can use Bluetooth to control it. And you can get the separate lithium uh, cells if you want. Now here are the electrical specifications. This nominal voltage is wrong. It's more like 13.3 to 13.5 uh, through most of its discharge cycle. 20 amp hour is fine. Energy is just, they're just multiplying these two together. Okay, the resistance less than 50 milliohms, which means you're not losing heat in the battery. Now, um, the charge voltage 14.4 to 14.6. Now, I have a 24 volt solar panel and it puts out uh, as much as 30 volts or more, but the charge controller brings that down to 14.6, which is what is charging my large. Uh, lithium ion battery right now. Standard charge current 4 amps, it can go up to 10. Now, this is real important maximum continuous discharge current 20 amps. Well, my uh, radio could do CW at that, okay, and make this for uh, a very nice support for the ICOM 7300 for like a short term POTA activity, you know, for a few hours. Discharge cutoff voltage, if you're down to 10 volts, you've discharged this too much. Don't do that, okay? Now, let's take a look. This is what the battery actually looks like in my setup here. I uh, leaned it over so you could see it. And I added to it this Anderson power pole thing. Now, what I did was created some little uh, terminal ends here. There's screws on the... Uh, these things right here and I covered this with plastic uh, self-sealing tape to uh, reduce the chance of something getting in there and creating a short circuit. So this thing right here, uh, which you can see a little bit better in this picture, is an Anderson power pole connector. They are genderless 
and all of my equipment has uh, these for the power. Okay, so uh, very handy to move power around. This is how I charged it initially. No charger came with it. So I have a little lab power supply. I put up as high as I could, 14.3. It's putting two amps in here. That's 30 watts, or a little under 30 watts. Note that the A light is on. It's current limited right now. Uh, when that current comes down a little bit, I can take that up to the 14.5 or 14.6. Just a couple little charts comparing uh, regular sealed lead acid batteries with uh, the lithium iron phosphate. These things are less than half the weight. Okay, they're somewhat smaller size. Um, the capacity you can get lead acid batteries in any capacity. Now, they're saying sealed lead acid battery one to three years. I have some uh, absorbed glass mat sealed batteries that are 15 years old that are working just fine because I've really babied them. Okay, these they say can go up to 10 years. Um, it's all a function of the cycle time. This says 200 to 500 times. You, you can go, it depends on the depth of discharge or DOD yeah, in one of these as to how long they'll last. And that's actually true of the lithium ion. You don't want to discharge a battery all the way. It's not good for it. Now, proper lithium ion batteries come with a battery management system, which is up in here at the top. And then you've got all these cells underneath that make up uh, the system. There's actually some uh, temperature sensors down in here that if they get cold will cause the battery to react appropriately. So for example, if it is um, short-circuited, it will shut it off rather than destroy the battery, whereas with a regular lead-acid battery, if you short it, you're going to have a fire in your hands. Um, Overcurrent protection, over voltage, and overheating. It says more cycles. Now notice here, 2,000 times for 100% depth of discharge. That is all the way down to where the battery management system cuts it off. 4,000 if you're just 80% depth of discharge, 7,000 50% depth of discharge. And people are used to this idea of 50% depth of discharge because that's how you treat a lead acid battery. Okay, the lithium iron phosphate battery dimensions are here in um, American units, okay? Nice little battery. Now, the way I tested it was uh, during the live stream, and this was the live stream that was held last Thursday evening. See, the battery is right here, and I've got it connected to my ICOM 7300, and I'm doing single sideband, which will have peaks that will draw 20 amps out of the battery. Most of the time, it's only drawing five or six uh, amps, okay? And I had a very successful uh, session with that. So, do I like the battery? Yes, very much. It's light. Um, it has enough juice in it that it'll do a full 100 watt POTA operation for a few hours maybe. Uh, if you cut the power back on your POTA operation, you can probably do that for a lot more. Now, uh, this category of battery, the lithium iron phosphate, was made popular in the amateur radio community by a company called BioEno. And I have uh, one of their batteries that I picked up at Dayton several years ago. And uh, this is now the overseas uh, direct to the United States uh, implementation of this uh, battery here. Um, again, the charging is very simple. 14.4 to 14.6 volts and keep it at that until you see the current come down to the point where it just goes enough to keep the battery management system ticking over and that way you can end the charge there. I have a solar charge controller on my 100 amp hour uh, Golden Mate battery. So do I recommend this battery? Yes, I do. I recommend these lithium iron phosphate batteries and uh, treat them nicely and they will treat you well too. They are frankly in several respects just flat better than uh, sealed lead acid or uh, absorbed glass mat lead acid or even the old-fashioned uh, wet cell uh, lead acid. 
Uh, first of all, they're far, far lighter. Second, they, uh, you can use the whole charge cycle. You can go down below 50% depth of discharge. Third, the charging system is really easy. Instead of doing the uh, absorption bulk and, and stuff, charges of the uh, three cycle uh, or four cycle 12 volt lead acid, you can do just simply applying the 14 point uh, 4 volts to 14.6 volts on this thing and let it manage itself. So that makes it a lot easier. Now I want to caution you that um, a lithium ion battery is not a direct drop in for a lead acid battery. You have to change the charger. You don't want to try to charge these with the 12, uh, with the uh, lead acid battery type of uh, a charge system is it's they're different. They're just different. You know, I won't say it's as, quite as much as the difference between gasoline and diesel, but it, it is a difference and we don't mix and match. So if you replace your main station battery with a lithium ion battery, then uh, you will want to change your charge system. Now, uh, there are places where you can get solar charge controllers and so on that work for lithium ion batteries. Uh, BioNO sells them, uh, as do other places too. So there you have it, a little peek at that. Let me just mention something about the channel. If you subscribe and click like, it makes me and YouTube very happy. So also uh, be sure to share the videos, and we do have a patron set up. So, and a special thanks to the patrons who are listed immediately following the end of this video. Until we next meet, 73.